Hey Retro Food fans, today we're going back to the 1940s to make a classic southern banana pudding. Moms have made it, grandmas have made it, childhood members are built on it. You're going to love it. I'm Jill and this is Yester Kitchen. I have had so many requests for southern banana pudding, so today is your day! Banana pudding is iconic, and add these little babies into it. Mom's made it, grandma's made it, and everyone I talk to says, hey, I have so many fond memories of my mom making this and my grandma making this, and so we're gonna make it today, but we're gonna talk about the stories. So in the late 1890s, bananas at the time were considered very exotic and they were just starting to get imported into the United States, mostly into New Orleans. And they had all these bananas and they had to start coming up with things to do with them, which is actually where Bananas Foster came from, but that's for a later episode. So one of the things that they started doing with these bananas is they started making banana pudding, but it's not the banana pudding that we know and love today. It was straight up banana pudding, nothing, nothing special to it. Then people started making additions. First, it was banana pudding and sponge cake. Then it was banana pudding and ladyfingers. And then in 1900, a little company called Nabisco, or the real name, came out with Nilla wafers. They really didn't jump into banana pudding at the beginning, but people started falling in love. In 1921, Mrs. Laura Curley submitted her recipe for banana pudding, including these little babies to a newspaper in Bloomington, Illinois called the Pentagraph. And that was all it took. People read it, they made it, and banana pudding started showing up with vanilla wafers everywhere. This became so popular that in 1940, vanilla wafers started printing the recipe on their box. And they still do today. And we're gonna make the original recipe right now. So, first we're gonna revisit our friend the double boiler. Hello, double boiler. Now I know a lot of you don't have double boilers, so I'm gonna, I went ahead and made my own, and if you haven't seen it in the previous episode, check out my peanutty butterscotch crunchy recipe where I talk all about the double boilers. But we're just gonna do a very, very basic double boiler. So here I have in the Dutch oven some simmering water just starting to boil, and I put a metal pan right on top. Now this is because you want your ingredients to cook really gently. You want it, it's, you're, we're making a custard and we want it to just cook really gently, not straight on the fire where it's gonna burn. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna take a half a cup of sugar and put it in. Let's get all of it, let's go crazy. And then we're gonna add a third a cup of flour and a dash of salt, literally. When I say dash, I mean dash. Then we're going to do three egg yolks, not whites, just yolks. If you're not sure how to separate out your yolks and whites, check out my steak tartare episode. I go into it in depth. But for right now, we have our three egg yolks. And then we're going to whisk in two cups of milk. Use whole milk. Do yourself a favor. You want a rich, creamy pudding. And you want to just really whisk it really hard to break up that flour. And now we're just gonna cook uncovered for about 10 to 12 minutes, stirring constantly until it gets thick. Really, that's it, you have pudding. So it's actually been about nine minutes, but like I said, you never know with your heat and what your pudding's gonna do, which is why you need to babysit it. And I highly recommend you use a whisk so you can constantly break up any lumps. So take a look at this. Look how beautiful that is. That is just perfect vanilla pudding. Okay, woo. So now we're gonna turn that off and push this back. And we are gonna take our very hot pan. And you're gonna add one teaspoon, I'm sorry, my hair is all over the place today. We're gonna take one teaspoon of vanilla. In it goes. I'm sorry, half a teaspoon of vanilla. And we're just gonna mix that around and get it beautiful. And now all we need to do is put it together. Oh, by the way, I have a 350 degree oven ready to go. So, we're gonna get this out of the way and we're gonna bring in an adorable little vessel for our pudding. All right, so let's get all the pudding off the whisk. 
and we're gonna replace it with a spoon. And I'll show you as we go. So we have one box of vanilla wafers, and out of that I removed 12, because that's gonna be your garnish. And I have five bananas, and I'm actually gonna cut them as I use them for a couple reasons. First of all, they won't brown, and also in case I don't use them all, I won't throw away bananas, because I'll have them in the skin. So, what we're gonna do, is we're gonna put the tiniest, tiniest bit of pudding on the bottom. Just enough to get it started. Okay, just like that. Now we're gonna take our vanilla wafers. And the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna cover the bottom. And while I do this, let's talk about why this thing became so Southern. Well, truth of the matter is, no one really knows. There's a lot of stories, but then again, that's food history and that's why I love it. So one of the stories is that it was picked up in the South because when the South has get-togethers, they are big, be it family reunions, church socials, funerals, weddings, birthday parties, the gang's all here. And banana pudding was delicious and very easy to make and you can make it in large quantities. So that's one reason. Okay, so now I'm gonna just take a banana and I'm gonna cut slices right over our vanilla wafers. And there's no rhyme or reason to this. It doesn't have to be perfect. It's pudding, for goodness sake. So I'm just gonna cut a banana around the bottom and probably use one more. So after the 50s and 60s is when banana pudding really started getting recognized as being Southern. So no one knows exactly what the reason is that popularity just exploded in the South, except for maybe what I'd already said with the gatherings and the, possibly it has a New Orleans connection because that's where the banana started. Okay, now we're gonna go ahead and add about half of our pudding. Right on top. And spread it around. This is about, this is about a two quart casserole. You can definitely use something smaller. I just, like I said, I feed, I feed my firemen, so I try to make as big as possible. Okay, and now you just do it again. banana pudding is considered a southern dish it's loved all over the nation I mean I just don't know when I put I put a, a question out there on one of my videos and said hey what's your favorite pudding banana was number one and a couple people shared their recipes not the recipes sorry a couple people shared their memories of when their grandma used to make it and their mom used to make it and they just have some great childhood memories from banana pudding and as you know, the show is all about childhood memories through food. So I thought, oh man, it is time to make banana pudding. And not only banana pudding, but the original banana pudding. Now we don't know if this is the exact recipe Mrs. Laura Curly used, but it's to the test of time. Okay, so now we're gonna go ahead and you're gonna hang on and I'm gonna get this place set up for phase two. Okay, phase two. I've got, remember those three egg yolks we put in the custard? Well, here's the three egg whites. We're gonna put those in a bowl and we're gonna turn those into a very simple meringue. Just like this, until soft peaks form. Okay, so what are soft peaks? Soft peaks are pretty much this. Like you'll pull it up and it'll kind of stay, but it'll kind of droop over. These are soft peaks. Once you have your soft peaks, you're gonna add a quarter cup sugar and blend until you have stiff peaks, which pretty much means you'll pull up the beater and you'll have these perfect mountains that'll stick. Okay, see, check it out. You pull it up and they stay. So those, there's our beautiful meringue. Now, remember we have that 350 degree oven? It's ready for us. Okay, so this out of the way, and we're gonna bring back our banana pudding. And 
we are gonna spread the meringue right over the banana pudding. And when you do, you really wanna make sure that it goes all the way to the ends because you really don't want the pudding to burn and the meringue will just act as like a beautiful little covering for um, protecting your pudding. It's pretty easy to do. You just kind of spread it all over. And then at the end, you can kind of go fancy because you made these stiff peaks. You can kind of make cute little peaks on your meringue and it will look fabulous. All right, so we're just about done. Everything is covered. And now I'm just going to do... And I'm sorry about my hair today, guys. It's a little humid here. And if you're a curly girl, you know what I'm talking about. Sometimes product just will not help you. <laughs> it's a good thing we've got this banana pudding to take my mind off of it. Okay, there we go. Banana pudding. I'm going to put this in the oven for 15 to 20 minutes until I see the meringue get brown. And I'll be right back. So our pudding has been in the oven for maybe about 17 minutes. You want it to go between 15 and 20 minutes, but keep watching it because as soon as, well, take a look. As soon as these beautiful brown peaks start to form, that's when you want to pull it out. So, you know, you never know, oven temperatures vary. But this is exactly what you want. And now our last step is to take these beautiful vanilla wafers and just kind of put them wherever you want to kind of let everybody know, hey, it's that banana pudding. So I know what you're asking. Hey, Jill, is there a National Banana Pudding Day? Mm-hmm. August 29th, make your banana pudding. Serve your banana pudding. Well, really any time of year, but that's the day. I wonder how they decided on that. That I don't know. Okay, so there's some beautiful banana pudding. We didn't even finish all the cookies. But this is it. Nah, maybe one more. There. So there is our gorgeous banana pudding. And you can serve it warm. Actually, when I took it out of the oven, I let it sit for about 15 minutes because you don't want it scalding hot. But you can serve it warm, you can serve it cold, and that goes back to that whole thing of why it might be southern because it's so versatile as far as service, as far as how much you can make, as far as feeding a crowd. And I just want to thank you so much for requesting banana pudding because it was a great idea and I had so much fun doing this episode. If you have any other requests, send them my way. So in the meantime, I've got my bowl, I've got my serving spoon. Let's take out a little bit of it just to see how gorgeous this is. And there we go. I get a little bit of that meringue. And there is banana pudding. And you know what? This is one of those rare times. I've tried it a million times, but it's so good. It's perfect. The reason you make vanilla pudding only is because the banana is just, once you start cooking it, it just adds so much banana flavor to it that it's just fresh and beautiful. And you gotta try it if you haven't already. But if you have, hopefully it's brought back some childhood memories. Go make some of your own. You're gonna love it. And now you know some history. If you would like to explore more dishes from your childhood or just the past, I invite you to subscribe. I release new videos every Friday. In the meantime, here's some retro dishes for you. And remember, every dish, even Southern banana, no way for pudding, has a story. I'll see you in the next video.